super excited. It's just been really fun. I mean, for a Bible geek like, like myself, you know, reading this stuff and be like, oh, that's why they wrote that. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode two of the Mura Scriptura podcast. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about mere reading the Elohist source part one overview. So item number one, the documentary hypothesis, uh, sometimes also called the JEDP theory. And in order to understand uh, what the Elohist source is, uh, kind of its uh, discovery. You need to know what the what this theory is all about. And what this theory says is that basically um, the books of the Bible were are basically compil- compilations of different authors. Uh, so there's different works, uh, different writings that were combined together. Uh, to form, uh, for example, Genesis, but but some sources span through uh, several different books, so it may not just be re- re- regulated to one book. And in the past, I've been very skeptical of this theory. It it just seemed there were some valid criticisms against it, and I I just I didn't think it held up that that well. And probably one of the biggest reasons that I was initially against it is that um, because of the chi- chiastic structure uh, w- within the within the biblical Old Testament biblic- biblical books or even New Testament biblical books, but um, focusing on a book such as Genesis, I-, I saw that there was chiastic structure in there. And if you don't know what chi- chiastic structure is, be sure to check out my. Uh, blog post about uh, chiastic structure uh, to learn what that is my website is mirrorreading.com that's m-i-r-r-o-r reading.com I'll try to link to it in the show notes as well but chiastic structure is basically a form of outlining that was used in ancient times kind of like how we outline today but their structure, the first half of the writing reflected the last half uh, in some way. So to, to see that, it really it argues against this uh, idea of slicing and dicing um, different works together because the, if that were the case, there wouldn't be this chiastic structure that um, shows kind of a unity as a whole. Uh, so that was that was one of the biggest reasons I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan of the documentary hypothesis. And going back to the to the name J J E D P theory, the J, the E, the D, and the P both are all stand. Each stands for uh, a different author. So the J is the Jawist or the Yahwist, and the E is the Elohist which is what I'm going to be focusing on. The D is the Deuteronomic and the P is the Priestly. And those are kind of the four main authors, according to this hypothesis, uh, that were put together and to form Genesis and even uh, other books. But the chiastic structure was really holding me back and also my, my own personal bias. I want it. I like the idea of Genesis being written by one author I'm not sure why. I just that seems more appealing to me. So those two hurdles, I I had to get over. And actually, ultimately, I still reject the documentary hypothesis. But that leads me to my next point, item two, uh, the supplementary hypothesis. And for this, uh, I owe a debt of gratitude to uh, Tema Yore. I don't. I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly, but uh, his website is BibleCriticism.com. I'll try to link to that in the show notes as well. But uh, really good work on this website. Uh, Jewish guy um, went through like the whole, all of the Old Testament, just about. Um, 
or quite a bit of it and broke broke all the writings into the different uh, authors and for the Elohist source he combined all of the Elohist verses into uh, one one book uh, and that's what I was looking for because I didn't want to have to do that work <laughs> That's not my forte, but he, and let me explain the difference between the documentary hypothesis and the supplementary uh, hypothesis. The, the documentary hypothesis, hypothesis is more like a splicing together, a, a soup mix, and took all these books and put them together. Whereas the supplementary hypothesis, each author builds on the next author. So... Uh, according to Yore, uh, the Elohist was kind of forms the kernel of uh, of Genesis and other books that other authors then build on. So Elohist comes first, then the Yahwist, um, and then the Deuteronomist, and then the Priestly, and they they all build on on one another and they're not all just thrown together but each one is aware of the other except for the Elohis since he was first and that makes more sense and Yori also addresses the chiastic structure uh, in the Bible and the supplementary hypothesis maintains chiastic chiastic structure and even uh, builds on it Uh, especially the, the Yahwist author uh, he he builds on the Elohist chiastic structure, um, maintaining the Elohist chiastic structure and adding his own chiastic structure. And so it's really, that got me over that hurdle where I could see, okay, different authors could be writing these books and still have this uh, unity of thought. Um, and it just... Uh, I was I was convinced of the supplementary hypothesis, and uh, I started. Uh, I was initially I was going to mirror read the Book of Genesis, uh, but then I was convinced of this supplementary hypothesis, and so I thought I would start mirror reading with the Elohist source, since he was the first source, the kernel, so to speak, to that the other authors built upon. Item number three, Elohist distinctives. So there's some differences if you just single out the Elohist uh, work. Uh, some of the main ones are Joseph. Joseph only had five brothers instead of 11. So you're missing Judah, Simeon, and Levi, which are all in the southern kingdom, uh, which I'll get to that in a minute. And then uh, Gad, Gad and Asher are also missing, and these are border border tribes. And there seems to be, especially with Gad, there seems to be uh, issues with border tribes trying breaking away or being influenced by other nations, and the Elohist authors trying to keep them in the fold and so a lot of the issues that the LOS deals with is dealing with keeping these border tribes in the fold but it also deals with a lot of the northern kingdoms so all of all of Joseph the five brothers that Joseph does have in the Elohist account are in the northern kingdom and if you don't know about that the uh, Israel broke into two kingdoms after shortly after the death of Solomon and so the Elohist is in the northern kingdom and also there's uh, another distinctive is that there's only seven commandments instead of the usual ten commandments so that's the seven are the positive commandments and then there's three three negative and by negative I mean don't do this instead of do this item number four uh, testing me reading with uh, these sor- different sources. So um, I wrote a little bit on my, on my blog about interpolations in the New Testament. So, you, so in the New Testament, you don't have these uh, 
large chunks of writings thrown like put together you have interpolations which is maybe a verse or two verses that are kind of thrown in the mix uh, by editors and such um so this was a big difference working in the old testament and you're dealing with these huge uh chunks of of work that are mixed together and so trying to mirror read that if you're trying to mirror, if you don't know there's d- different authors and you're trying to mirror reading you're mirror reading that all as one that can get confusing so uh, my goal is to test uh, this supplementary hypothesis by uh, mirror reading the Elohist uh, account the Elohist source and then eventually uh, me reading the next author that builds on t- onto the Elohist source, which is the Yahwist source. Oh, and I should say another Elohist distinctive is that the Elohist use, uses the, the name Elohim for the name of God, whereas opposed to the Yahwist, he uses the name Yahweh for the name of God. So I'm going to see uh, if the Yahwist is, if the Yahwist is dealing with the same exact issues as the Elohist, then they're probably not two different authors. It's probably the same author because the likelihood of them dealing with the same exact issues, uh, well, it's impossible. So um, that's you know applying mere reading to to these different source theory. I'm really curious how that's going to uh, turn out. So I'm getting close to wrapping up the Elohist source and then. I don't know if I'll move on to the Yahweh and to the uh, Yahwist source right away, but eventually uh, that's what I want to do. And then I'll compare the two and see how they uh, play out. Item number five. This is, this has been a very exciting process. Me reading the Elohist source. It's, uh, it's discovering the issues that uh, he was dealing with and uh, it's like reading the Bible for the first time. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning Bible stories that I've never heard before. And I grew up in the church, so I've heard them all ad nauseum. So it was kind of cool. And I've, uh, I've gotten really good at, <laughs> I've gotten really good at mirror reading, not to toot my own horn, but in, you know, to, to it's, it's, I've really developed and progressed. And I mean, it's been a lot of work. It used to be a five chapter book like Ephesians would take me a year or two to me read that and get my head around and uh, this Elohist source was I I don't know 30 chapters maybe and um, I knocked that out in three months Uh, well I guess I'm still working on the last part of it but it it was a lot quicker and it was more accurate and it's better it's better documented Uh, so super excited it's just been really fun i mean for a bible geek like like myself you know reading this stuff and be like oh that's why they wrote that and i i hope that i hope you have that feeling too as we go through this and um you know if you've ever had that feeling of of reading the bible and and being like what why is this in here uh, or hearing an explanation for a difficult verse and being like, yeah, that makes sense, but intuitively knowing that it's not right. And um, so I hope that, I mean, I can't shed light on every verse of the Bible for you, but some of the Elohist source verses I think I can shed some light on. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Item number six, when was the Elohist source written? So most scholars think think it was written in the Northern Kingdom, which I agree with, which I already talked about. Um, And uh, they vary on the the time, but I'm going to tell you when it was written (laughs) Uh, because I think it's pretty obvious. So in the Northern Kingdom, uh, most people who are familiar with the Northern Kingdom are aware that the capital of the Northern Kingdom of Israel was Samaria uh, but for a brief time right when the king, northern kingdom split apart the capital was located at a place called Shechem and Shechem is a primary place 
in the work of the Elohist. So for that reason, I think it was written very early on in the northern, the beginning of the, of the northern kingdom because Shechem would have still been the capital. Some other hints uh, is has to do with Manasseh and Ephraim, uh, two tribes in northern Israel, and that they were primary power centers and that makes sense if 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 the if the capital is in manasseh which that's where shechem was and the king was from ephraim you can see why why the elohist would promote those two uh promote those two tribes Item number seven. So in that Elohist account, there's uh, what's referred to as five cycles. So there's the Abraham cycle, the Jacob cycle, the Joseph cycle, the Moses cycle, and the Balaam cycle. So I'm going to be doing an episode on each one of those cycles. Item number eight, continuity. So each one of these cycles are pretty distinct. They all deal with different issues. They all deal with different uh, thing. So there's not a lot of unity um, in terms of the issues that they're dealing with. Uh, so, you know, I think they were written around around the near time, but I they may not have been written at the same time. They may not have even been written by, by the same author. I am open to to there being uh, different authors because there's really, there's not much continuity uh, between, I mean, they're not like radically different. Uh, They all kind of have the same thrust, but, um, you know, in terms of the issues that each cycle is different, they're, they're, they're different. One of the things that kind of carries through the different cycle is uh, God's um, God's ability to, uh, to make make babies to uh, in, ter- in terms of uh, helping people with fertility, uh, God is able to do that. But it's it's not really a God is God is a powerful fertility God. It's more of a uh, it's more fo- it's more focused on the people that were born as opposed to. God's ability to do it, I don't know if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, so God, God, co- God caused so and so to to be born. So, so and so is cool. So be nice to him and his descendants. That type of thing. You know, there is some fertility continuity, but it's it's not really. It's not like a main point that the Elohis is trying to to make overall. It's just related to cycle specific people that were born uh and then the other issue that uh, i found in two cycles is the jacob and israel combination and uh, i'll get more in detail later uh but it's it's primarily in the jacob cycle and it's mentioned once in the balaam cycle so this idea that um jacob had two names uh, jacob and israel other than that, not a lot of continuity in terms of the issues that each cycle is dealing with. They're all dealing with distinct issues, and um, so I think that's interesting. Item number nine, theological impact. I think this could call into question the Bible's credibility. You know, I I don't know. It's, I think it opens it up for debate. I mean, how... You know, the, uh, the, one of the big issues for one of the big statements for in- inerrancy is that um, it's it's accurate in the original manuscripts. Well, what's the original manuscript here? Is it the is it the Elohist source? Is it uh, is it the Yah the the Yahweh source, or or was that source wrong until the priestly source and came along and added the his genealogies, and then then it's official. You know, I don't know. I, I, it makes me, it makes me think. I, it's 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 unsettling that uh, the Elohist source is uh, such blatant propaganda, <laughs> and 
And then yeah, the Yahweh comes along and corrects him. I don't know. Maybe it's not a big deal. But it's it's certainly something that I've been pondering. And it's it's still new to me. Maybe uh, maybe it'll give you some thought too. So that's it for today. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.